With a bold and controversial title like Game Changer, how Zelda's open world dethroned Skyrim, I know I have jumped into the deep end of the swimming pool. Even as the one making the statement, I know full well how much of a big deal it is and it is my responsibility to prove my point. Skyrim has been around since 2011, has been ported to 12 different platforms, an insane number only matched by the more impressive feat of more than 60 million copies sold worldwide. I repeat, 60 million copies sold. It has reached its earned success by providing the best open world game the world has ever seen. It is seen as the open world template and every open world game is compared directly to it. I am a fan myself and I have been enjoying the Elder Scrolls series since Morrowind in 2002, then Oblivion in 2006 and Skyrim in 2011. It was my favorite open world series until a very unexpected competitor entered the gaming world in 2017. The first game to truly challenge Skyrim in six years. 2017 marked the launch of Nintendo's latest video game console, the Nintendo Switch, and a new Zelda game was a launch title, Zelda Breath of the Wild. Zelda Breath of the Wild launched on both the Wii U and the Switch. I had zero expectations, truth be told. I simply wanted something to play on my new Nintendo console. I did not like the art style that I saw in the screenshots, and frankly, I was not even sold on the open world idea. Fun fact before continuing, Nintendo has admitted that they studied Skyrim during development as they recognized Skyrim as the open world leader and wanted to learn from it, not copy it. On face value, Zelda Breath of the Wild and now Zelda Tears of the Kingdom look real similar to Skyrim in terms of offerings. Huge open worlds you can do whatever you want in, find exotic weapons, armor and ingredients, cook your own meals, rob enemies' bodies after defeating them, follow the main story or give in to the hundreds of side quests available, ride horses, find secrets and make your own adventure, your own personal story. Before I reveal what Zelda does new and better, first let's give credit to the former King Skyrim for what it still does better and provides. Skyrim is a better RPG in every single conceivable way. Role playing games are about choosing who you want to be. In Skyrim, you have classes. You can be an assassin, a barbarian, a magic wielder, and so much more. These classes have unique benefits and abilities tied to their class. This does not even exist in Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom. Every ability is always leveled up by simply doing the skill. If you jump a lot, you will literally become better at jumping. Every action benefits you in some way. Even your ability to talk to NPC characters becomes stronger, letting you trick or convince them to reveal more information or score a better deal with buying or selling items. The sheer amount of different options to the character is also overwhelming and not matched by the current Zelda games. Smithing, alchemy, cooking, I'm not even going to bother going through everything this amazing game offers. As an RPG, it's the winner by a landslide. But the open world aspect? Time to dive off a sky island and admire the world of Hyrule below as Zelda is the new king of open world design. When you play Breath of the Wild, you are left completely alone. You have no armor or weapons. Your first weapon is just a stick you found lying on the ground. It's weak and even shatters when you defeat your first enemy. This is the first of many additional game mechanics that tie the world together. Breakable weapons. 
every single weapon will shatter and cease to exist, and this initially is a very tough pill to swallow. I'm the type of guy who likes to have a favoured weapon and stick to it. However, regardless of the sword, axe, club, spear, trident, boomerang, hammer or bow and arrow combination, or will shatter. This on purpose weakness creates a need, better and more durable weapons. Shortly after this initial encounter, you may avoid other enemies you see in the distance, since your literal only weapon already broke. You find a small building or a tiny mountain to climb. Your climb is slow, but successful. Jump off the little building or mountain to use your paraglider for the first time, and you glide to the ground. It's simple and covered a surprisingly good amount of ground. The ability to climb anything and paraglide wherever you want feels fresh. This open world game does not have me limited to what I can walk on, but also go up as well. Every mountain or structure is not an obstacle to stop me going forward, but now a real option. You could go down the footpath that is right in front of you that leads to a village that we can see in the distance, but I wonder what is over the hill over there. As you're climbing, suddenly Link stops, slides down and eventually falls, crash onto the dirt below. What happened? Introducing your second need, stamina. While running, gliding or climbing, you use stamina that is represented with the green circle. You ran out of stamina mid-climb and fell down. So once again, just like the weapon that broke on you, power has been taken away. You can't just climb anything you want. So what is the solution? You don't know. Later, you're running through the forest, picking up useless things like mushrooms and apples. You eat the apples to recover health. Nice natural way to heal yourself. But the mushrooms are different. You can eat them, but they do barely anything. At some point you're going to read the description of the mushrooms in your inventory and learn that these mushrooms replenish stamina. That's exactly what you need to climb higher and discover better weapons and maybe get your first piece of armor. But there's a catch. It needs to be cooked first. Now this is yet another need. And you're going to hear me say the word need a lot because that is what makes Zelda the better open world game. A need is different to an option. Skyrim has heaps of options and during any playthrough, you're ignoring more mechanics than you are actually using. Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom is designed in a way where everything needs each other to work. You need to climb higher to get better weapons and armor. You need to survive. That means you need to learn to cook as opposed to cooking being an option only for those who can be bothered. That means you need to understand how ingredients work together to make you stronger, faster, tougher, and increase your stamina limit. You find pots all over the place with lit fires underneath, and it's literally as simple as filling your arms with up to five ingredients and throwing them in. Whammo, and the meal is done. Different combinations have different advantages and an effect can also be strengthened by cooking lots of the same thing as well. Want more stamina from those green mushrooms? Cool. Cook five of them in a single meal. Cooked meals can be accessed at any time on the pause screen and it freezes the game. That means you can be climbing something really tall and right before you run out of stamina, Link can eat your food and gain stamina on the spot letting him continue a climb he otherwise could not. So food helps you explore. Exploring gives you items. Items let you stay alive long enough that you can explore more. Everything is connected. And as we continue, you will see that this trend continues throughout the entire game. You will start to understand why fans are in love with these games and why the world itself is a major player. Sure. Other games have random stuff you can grab in the forest or in trees, but it's never needed. The world and Hyrule is your greatest asset. You feel connected as if you are living off the land. 
let's revisit the difference that climbing allows when compared to Skyrim once again. Firstly, climbing, it's simply fun. It's a slow action that rewards curiosity. Often you will discover a new area or get an item. What you will likely find, and this is a stroke of genius by Nintendo, is you will find a Kurok Seed. Hidden throughout the entirety of both Zelda Breath of the Wild and Zelda Tears of the Kingdom are hidden little friends. You cannot see them until you are already standing in their location or only after you perform a specific action. They are like little children who are playing hide and seek with you. If a location looks like it's hard to reach and it seems there's no reason to go there, go anyway because you're most likely wrong. Kurok Seeds are a currency to upgrade your inventory and give yourself more room. You have no weight limits in these Zelda games, which is a blessing. However, you also have limited amount of slots available for weapons, armors, and shields. That's what you can upgrade. More importantly than the eventual reward itself is the fact that the game world is filled with tiny puzzles and locations that reward the player for simply exploring. Game is always rewarding you just for the act of exploration. There is no need to look out for hidden puzzles in Skyrim or trying to get to hard to reach places. If you can see with your own eyes there's nothing there, then there's nothing there. But in Zelda, there likely is something there and you won't know until you're already standing in that spot. That means every single mountain, village, lake, field and everything in between should be explored inch by inch. Continuously being rewarded in some shape or form along the way, you don't even need to focus on missions or the side quests. Simply existing in the world, looking around you and picking everything up you see along your way will reward you either immediately or later on. Wasted moments do not exist in Breath of the Wild and in Tears of the Kingdom. Part of the fantasy of an open world is the idea that it's all connected and could even live on without the player. Dynamic day and night cycles are a standard and even changing weather patterns like snow or rain. These are not simply for show however and do impact gameplay. Let's say you have your tough guy armor on or a powerful axe and you climbed a really high mountain with ease and even have stamina to spare. You are so high up, it's snowing. But wait, what's this? Your character is taking damage. Why is Link flashing red and losing health? It's easy to overlook, but this whole time there has been a small little UI that monitors how hot or cold you are. Ice and snow, it's cold. So now you're taking cold damage now that you're up on the snowy mountains. We need a solution. Clearly, what we need is to bring our temperature up. Remember those spicy peppers we picked up earlier? Well, like everything else, it has use and it's now being revealed. Cooking those spicy peppers and eating the meal will give you heat resistance for a certain amount of time. Also, maybe you picked up warmer clothing or armor this whole time that you haven't gone around to equipping. Heck, even an open flame source or holding a torch will help keep Link's body warm. Once again, a need occurred which can only, which can be solved through multiple ways with items the player just naturally picked up. Once again, everything is connected and nothing is going to waste. There are also very hot locations that you need to do the opposite and figure out how to cool down. Now Skyrim does have a survival mode where you are impacted by the weather, but this is not the default mode. A typical playthrough of Skyrim can have players running through the snow in their underwear if they want. Now Zelda's approach to the environment makes the world feel more convincing. A hot or cold location is not simply a cosmetic change. It's not just something that looks different. It goes even further than this. If you kill an animal like a wolf, it will drop some meat. This meat can be picked up, eaten and cooked. If the location is cold, the meat will freeze and change its properties. If that meat happens to be in a hot location or near a fire source, it will erupt in flames and be cooked. If you are caught in a storm, 
lightning bolts strike the ground in a beautiful explosion of particles and terror. Not only can the lightning hit the player and cause fires, but it is realistically attracted to metal. You would need to unequip anything that might attract the lightning or smartly use it to your advantage. The world in these Zelda games are incredibly smart and creativity is rewarded. Throw an item at enemies that is already attracted in lightning and have mother nature herself strike down your foes. To encourage even more exploration of this beautiful and deadly open world game, which by the way, as hard as it is to believe, it's they are even bigger than what is provided in Skyrim, we have something called shrines hidden all over the place. Most hidden, but plenty in plain sight as well. When you step inside a shrine, you are transported to a different location where the environment is different every time. You are greeted with a puzzle, normally physics based, and you need to figure out how to complete them. There are hundreds of these, each one is different. It's up to you how many you do as well. They do reward you with a special item that lets you level up Link. So you don't need to only rely on items and armor, Link himself can be made stronger. You have two options with your shrine currency. You can give Link more hearts, so health, or you can increase the stamina wheel, so then you can run, glide, swim, and climb for longer. See, once again, everything is connected to your survival and is not an extra option that you will ignore, which is typical in most open world games. There are many, many things in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom to collect, but all of them play a part one way or another. You don't have to play along though. If you want to ignore everything and play these games on hard, that is your choice. Now so far, all we have really discussed is the improvements to open world design that Zelda Breath of the Wild introduced. The weapons, items, armor, Kurok seeds, shrines, weather, cooking, paragliding, and climbing is the first round of improvements. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, the latest entry, takes open world design even more and raises expectations yet again. At this stage, Zelda already has a massive advantage over Skyrim. The map is larger, you can climb mountains, and you can paraglide to explore the world in a way not possible in Skyrim. Every single item works, and the game mechanics work together to assist with survival. The thrill that almost every single location holds value and secrets, wonderful. The question is, where does Nintendo go from here? Up of course, up into the sky. Now, even before we release, we all knew that the key selling point of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is that Hyrule will once again be explorable, but Sky Islands have been introduced. Literal chunks of land just floating in the air, waiting to be explored. You're so high that if you look down over the edge, you're looking down at the clouds. As someone who sees video games as art, I do need to point out the breathtaking views of looking past the clouds and onto the land below. To see so far is a thing of beauty. Watching a sunrise horizon affect the world really is breathtaking. Often I find myself just watching the world exist and knowing I'm still connected to the land beneath as I can jump off at any time with no loading screen at all. The first Zelda open world game was already very physics driven, but Tears of the Kingdom is on another level and then breaks all logics previously made. Link now has the ability to stick items together and also merge others. Ever wondered how effective an axe attached to a sword would be? You can do it. What if you attach a block of ice to the end of a club? You can do that as well. In fact, you can mix anything with anything else. And that's not an exaggeration. You can attach a mushroom to your shield. Any item connects with anything else. And the effects, and the effects vary. The point is, even though we were already used to using all our items, now seemingly junk can become a weapon. It's not just weapons either. Make yourself cars, boats, and planes by sticking together ancient items. Everything is at your fingertips and the possibilities seemingly endless. We will see original creations for years to come after everything has been discovered. 
So with the massive land of Hyrule and now Sky Islands, surely there is no more to explore, right? Right? Well, there is a place called the Depths. It's an underground cave spanning, wait for it, the entirety of Hyrule. That's right, doubling the size that was already larger than Skyrim. Now, it's not the most interesting place, but you do visit often for certain discoveries, special items, and so forth. Now, I hope you have already subscribed and liked the video if you have managed to reach this part. On one hand, I cannot believe how long this all went on for, but on the other hand, there is just so much to say about these new open world Zelda games. I do hope Elder Scrolls 6 learns from these Zelda games, just like Zelda learned from them originally. I would love the ability to climb in Elder Scrolls 6. Not only that, it feels needed as after experiencing first class, I can't go back to anything less. By the way, I don't dislike Skyrim, it's just no longer the best and I explain and I tried to explain why. Now, God bless you all, take care and I'll see you all next time. Alright, bye bye.